in the last video we generated the inverse hyperbolic tan function. Now we're going to postpone our look at the inverse hyperbolic sine and cosine. Because in order to generate these functions we're going to have to use a more complicated process. So for the moment let's stick with the hyperbolic vectoring mode and we'll see the different functions we can generate in that mode. And once we've looked at that we'll move on to the rotation mode. And finally we'll have a look at how to generate the inverse hyperbolic sine and cosine. So the first one we're going to look at here is how to generate a square root. Now from the previous video you'll note that the value for our final x, which is our xn, is given by the an square root of x naught squared minus y naught squared. So if you have a look at the previous video and you'll see that the output for our xn was given by this function here. So from this we can therefore say that we have a method of generating a square root. But the problem is the square root is not quite in the right format because this is generating the square root of x naught squared minus y naught squared. And what we want to do is generate the square root of a number. So let's give our number a, a letter and we'll call that number a. So we're looking to find the square root of a. So what we're asking then is what input values x0 and y0 do we need in order to produce the square root of a? Well, I'll give you the actual answer here and we'll multiply it out and you'll see that it actually works. So if we were to replace the value of x0 with the value a plus 1 upon 4 an squared, and remember our an is just our gain factor here, which is approximately equal to 0.82816 for our hyperbolic functions. And the y0 will give us the value a minus 1 upon 4 an squared. So if we were to multiply out these brackets here, then we're going to have our a squared plus a upon 2an squared plus 1 upon 16an to the power of 4. So that's just simply multiplying this bracket out. And if we multiply this bracket here out, we're going to have our a squared plus a upon 2an squared plus 1 upon 16an to the 4. Now, if we were to add these terms together, you would see that this term here will cancel with this term, and this term here will cancel with this term. And when we add these two terms together, we're going to get the value of the square root of a upon an squared. Now what we can do is we can take this an squared out of the bracket, and when we take that an squared out of the bracket, it just becomes our an. And these will cancel, and it's going to give us the root of a. So you can see here, all we're doing is using a bit of basic algebra in order to pick the correct values for our x0 and y0 that ensures that this equation here will give us the root of the value of a. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the value for our x0 is this term here. And the value for our y0 is this term here. So let's go ahead and we'll look and see how we write out the quartic algorithm that will give us our square root. So our quartic algorithm looks like this. We have our quartic algorithm, which is the same as we've seen in the previous video, but the initialization has changed. 
We now have the x0 value equals a plus 1 upon 4an squared, and the y0 value is a minus 1 upon 4an squared. Now you'll note here that there no, is no z0 value, because we are not interested in the value for our z0 in this particular realisation. So the final value xn will give us the root of a, the yn will give us a value of 0, the zn will actually give us a value of a half of ln a an squared. Now we'll cover this realisation in the next video. So for this video we're not really interested in the value for zn, we're only interested in the value for our xn. And we also got our value for our an which is the product of our n, the root of 1 minus 2 to the minus 2j. So let's go ahead and we'll look at this in the graphical calculator. So we have our unit circle, we have our parabolic curve. I've written out the algorithm here, and I've also written out the initialization and the final output that we expect. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to find the square root of 4. Now the square root, root of 4 is a value 2. But in order to work that out, we're going to have to choose a value for x0 and y0, and we're going to have to make x0 equal to the value of 4 plus 1 upon 4an squared, and the y0 is going to be 4 minus 1 upon an squared. So let's look at these values. So we're going to have a is equal to 4. The square root of 4 should give us the value of 2. So this should be our final answer. So the value for x0 is going to be 4 plus 1 upon 4 times the an. So the an is approximately 0.82816. And that's all squared. And that's equal to 4.3645. So that's our first value, x0. Now we can work out our second value, y0 which is 4 minus this value, which is 3.6355. So let's initialize our simulation with these two values. So let's put the value in for x0. It's 4.3645. And the value for our y0 is 3.6355. So you can see here we start off with this pink line here, and this is the point for our initialization, which is our x0 and our y0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract off our angles, and as we subtract off our angles, we're going to compare the height here, this yi, and we're going to see whether it's greater than 0 or less than 0. So we'll take off our first angle, which is uh, 26.565 degrees. And what we're interested in is this value here, our xn. And then we take off our next value again. And you can see the yi is still greater than zero. So we continue taking off these angles. So I'll work along and I'll take off all of the angles. And you can see as we take off the angles, we get this value for our xn tending towards the value of 2, which is the square root of 4. And this is the final value that we end up with here. You can see that our yn, the height here, is tending towards 0. In fact, we've got a value of 0.7174. And the value for our xn is tending towards the root of 4, which is a value of 2. And our final value we get is 2.008. So now we have a neat little way of generating the square root of a number. Now in the next video, we're going to look at the second part of this, which allows us to generate the natural log. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.